I'm doing today is I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the organization and setup and how I use Doctopus in my class. So the first thing I have is I already have a roster created for my class. And when I go ahead and open up this document, what I have uh, here is I have first name, last name, email address. If I wanted to put them in any groups and have certain people partner up, I would have a separate column here that would say group and then I would label them like A, B, C, D and to group them together, but I don't need this. So I need to keep this um, file here without any changes to it. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do the file, make a copy, and then I'm going to take copy of 7th hour roster off. And at the end of it, I'm going to put the name of the assignment I'm going to use Dr. Poisson. And the name of this assignment is called O. Henry. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now, I have already created my directions for my O. Henry as a Google Doc, and it's located right here. Now, what's going to make my life a lot simpler is if I go ahead and make some folders to keep this organized. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my drive, and I'm in my information processing um, class. Here's my seventh hour. I'm going to make a folder right now, and I'm going to call that folder O. Henry. So this is going to be where all of my assignments that the students create, they're going to go into that folder called O. Henry, and I don't have to go through and track them down and put them into a folder. So you can see this O. Henry folder is located right here. So now, I'm going to go right here to my spreadsheet that says 7th hour roster O. Henry, and the first thing I have to do is I have to set up my script. So I'm going to go to insert script. Um, Doctopus happens to be the very first script that comes up and what I need to do is click on install and it goes through and gets the information and is doing some stuff in the background. Um, once it's go ahead and is installed, I'm going to get an OK button down here on the bottom to say that's installed. I'll click on uh, scroll down here and I have to authorize it and anytime you use Doctopus, you need to go through this step on every spreadsheet and it's just going to say, okay, you have it installed, we're good to go, I'm going to click on close. I know that Doctopus has been set up on this spreadsheet because right now I have a menu option that says Doctopus. It'll be really awesome. So now, I've created Doctopus, done the steps here, so now let's go ahead and run this. How does Doctopus work? Instructions there, but I'm going to launch installation. So to launch installation, what I have to do is my first step here is I have to decide for my classroom, how am I sharing my O. Henry directions? So here are my options. Project groups, individual or whole class. Project groups, let's say I have four kids that I want to work in the same document, I would use that. Um, or half the class is going to do one thing and the other half. So it's going to be where you'd have multiple kids editing the same document but not the whole class individuals where each kid is going to work individually on the document and then I can look at it and the last one then is whole class. For this uh, set assignment here in my class I'm going to do it individual. Now once I set how I want it shared over here on the right it tells me it creates a separate individual edible doc for each student in your class. Okay. Now, right here it gives me, it says whole class access level. What do I want the whole class to see? Well, I don't want the whole class to see anyone else's, so I'm going to leave this set here with no access. If I wanted to, I could allow view only, but I don't want to. Now, what's asking me here, it says which sheet contains your roster. So I'm going to look here on my spreadsheet. I am on sheet one down here on the bottom, so it's going to be there. Now it wants to know which column has email address. Right now it's saying first name. I'm going to say mm, I want to use email address. So I'm going to save that setting. That's going to be step number one. And what it just did on the background here is it kind of just went some, put some header information in there and realized uh, some information in order to run this script. Now, the first thing it asked me is I need to say where is the folder that has my document template? What does that mean? where is the folder that has that instructions or that assignment or worksheet that you're going to give to the students. And I have it in my information processing folder. Okay, so I'm looking in my information processing folder and what it's doing right now, it's going through and saying, all right, which file do you want to share? And here's the file. Now before you might have saw that I actually had a folder called O. Henry, but that's going to be where I want the assignments to be turned into. So this is the file I want to copy and share, so I'm going to save those settings. 
after I've saved those settings, now I have to go through and set up my naming and notifications. The first thing I have to do right here is tell it where do I want to put all of these students' files that they're going to go through and do, which is why I made that folder called O. Henry. So right now, these are just lists of folders that I have. So I'm going to want all of these assignments to go in a folder called O. Henry. Now, this is where the really slick part is that saves a lot of time. It says, how do you want this, the files named? Well, what I want it named is my naming structure is last name. So I'm actually going to copy this up here. And I'm going to copy it to make sure that I don't spell anything wrong because this is kind of a field name. And I'm going to, I want it to be last name. And then I'm going to put in O. Henry. Now, kids don't have to worry about renaming it or doing anything because it's automatically going to be given this name. So um, Sally Smith in my class is going to get a file that says Smith O. Henry. And I don't have to worry about it not being with the name Popper and anything like that. It will work well. Now, the recipient's email address is leave blank to avoid sending notifications. Well, I want to send a notification. So I'm going to leave this in there and it's going to use the email address to send them. Email subject. Well, Automatically, it comes up with the subject I've shared document with me, and this is going to be directions for class project on Monday, January 14th. And then I would go through here and physically type in any specific instructions for the class, so I'll do that right now. So I just went through and typed in some specific notes that I wanted my students to see, so I can go ahead and click on Save Settings. And they go through what happens next is it's going to look at all my information here, and it's going to give me a preview of what is going to be done here. And this is the fun little graphic that comes up with Doctopus. Um, this is a spot for where we can go ahead and look at exactly what we have. So we have the doc sharing configuration and set up as individual. The whole class does not have access to anything. The file that it's sharing is called O. Henry. And right here, this is what the email would look like. Uh, the first student in class is listed here. Here's the subject line. Um, and the body of the email says you are now an editor on this document. It's going to give the students a link to that specific document that is only for that one individual. And here's the notes that I typed in below there. So if I was ready to go ahead and share this, I would go ahead and click on Run, Copy, and Share. And then at that moment, the students would get uh, an invitation to that. I'm not going to share it right now because I want to wait a little bit for my class. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Exit. So I have it all set up and I can go ahead and run this script right at the beginning of class. I've already tested and demoed to make sure that my email addresses are work. Let's say it is class time when I want to run it. All I have to do is go back into my Doctopus memo, uh, menu and go to Documents and Share and it's going to get me that information. Here's there. When I run, run it, I would just click on Run, Copy, and Share and you'll be good to go. Once you have run your script, you are going to see that your spreadsheet information will look like this. Um, again, uh, this, this is one that I've done before and I can go ahead and uh, click on any one of these links here and it will take to me to my students last time that they were able to um, edit it. So I can see here that Kendra edited this on the 7th. Uh, I can click on this document here, it will open up and I will be able to see Kendra's information. I can go ahead and put any comments I want on there. Uh, the other thing that I can do is go ahead and enter a grade and any written feedback. So that is how you can use Doctor Push in your classroom. Have fun and rock it!